All right, welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man, back in the studio for a, another painting tutorial. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and Warcry content as well. Everything from reactions and reviews to painting, modeling, conversion, magnetizing tutorials for any kind of tabletop games. So uh, today we're going to do a little painting tutorial for our Kill Team combat gauges as well as our barricades. So I went ahead and primed all these in a silver primer. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just kind of accent them up a little bit. Uh, my main goal here is to make them look cool. I want the combat gauges to have the appropriate colors for the little like quick reference shapes for gameplay. So it's easy to see obviously like blue or white or square or triangle etc. And then for the little barricades I'm going to try out a couple of different paint schemes here. I've done a couple already and I want to do some a little bit different. Uh, one of the like tabletop simulator games does a sort of like red and blue for the corresponding teams so i think i'm going to go ahead and do half of them in red and half of them in blue just to kind of mix it up a little bit so we're going to go ahead and get started with our Karlberg crimson this is a citadel shade and it's basically just the red shade from their line so we're going to go ahead and give that a try so just going to go ahead and load up our brush and i want to do basically like the whole thing in this crimson but i want to make sure that the color of the wash collects down in like the bottom portion of this i'll go back at the end and do like uh, some little like silver highlights little dry brush action and everything but uh, my main goal is to kind of have the wash like heavier towards the bottom and use like basically gravity to our advantage uh, to get like a lighter shade at the top and then a stronger shade at the bottom So just going to go ahead and lay on a nice thick coat. I'm starting with the back side of the barrier and then the other side has like the little legs on it. I will do that side afterwards. And then when I position these after I am done painting them and I set them up to dry, I'm going to let them dry at kind of an angle so the wash doesn't all pool at the bottom. It's kind of like a progressive pooling towards the bottom. We'll see here in a minute. All right, so there we have a nice coat over everything. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just kind of like let a little more pool up in the various recesses so that we get a little more stronger of a shade in certain areas. Like I want a little more to collect at each of the edges there. But that is essentially what I'm going for. And again, I'm just kind of decreasing the angle so it doesn't all run towards the bottom as like gravity would normally have it do. So that is perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. It's a perfect angle and everything. And I'm actually going to use my Citadel painting handle with the handy dandy little arms on it to hold it in place exactly how I want it. And that's perfect. Just going to go ahead and set that off to the side and let it dry.
All right, so we have those first three done with the Carlboro Crimson. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our Drakenoff Nightshade, and this is going to give us our blue tone. Went ahead and loaded up our brush with the Drakenoff Nightshade, and we're just going to apply plenty of this down in here. Now one of the most important things is, is to just make sure that we don't end up with any little air bubbles down in the corners where we don't get any actual paint to dry. Because the most important thing, we can do some touch-ups later, but we just want to make sure we get a nice coat of the Drakenoff Nightshade over everything. And that is it. That's the overall look we're going for. Just going to go ahead and set that aside to dry and do our other two as well. All right. So for the next step, we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of lead belcher. And we're going to be doing some dry brushing. So the effect we're going for here after we finish up with the wash is we just want to essentially dry brush some lead belcher on from the top down. So with the lead belcher first, we're looking to hit about 75% of this and make sure that we keep kind of the red tint down into the cracks. And then we're going to come through at the end with some iron breaker and we're going to do like maybe the top 25% or so. So we want to have a little bit less with each color uh, as we kind of like brighten it up. So uh, like always, we want to start with too little and then kind of add it as we go because we don't want to ruin the work that we've already done. And there we can see we still have the red down in the recesses and then essentially the lead belcher has picked out some of the brighter areas and then we'll go ahead and do the backside as well and then just sort of work our way down and then when this is all done we'll come back through with our iron breaker and just do a little bit slighter of a highlight um, again just focusing towards the top so essentially we have like the brightest steel towards the top and then our darker kind of like shadowy red or blue in case of the other one towards the bottom
Here we have one of our blue ones, and we're just going to do the exact same thing with this one. All that is so far is just our Drakenoff Nightshade. And there we can see that cool effect going on with the uh, metallics over top of that uh, colored wash. And we'll just do the same thing on the back side. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and transition from the lead belcher to the iron breaker. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and dry brush a little bit of this on top. And say if we covered up roughly 50% of the exposed areas with the lead belcher, we're gonna cover up about 50% of that with the iron breaker. So about 25%. And again, we're focusing it towards the top where the light would hit it, doing like sort of an artificial kind of metallic zenithal lighting uh, with our dry brush. So, so far we've come down basically about like 50% or so with the lead belcher. Now we just want to do a little bit less with the iron breaker. And it's just going to be a slightly more light or less dark of a metallic color. So again, we're going to focus on the top part first. And we're going to start real gently and just kind of work our way towards the most exposed areas. And we just want to make sure that we don't ever come down as far as we did with the lead belcher so we have a sort of transition between them and that's all we're looking for
And now we're just going to do the same thing on our blue ones. And this is going to be a pretty subtle difference between these two colors. But the Iron Breaker just has a little more of like a brighter sheen to it. And the Lead Belcher just looks a little more like beat up and kind of washed out. And this really helps like the rivets and like the edges stick out and be a little more bright and shiny. All right, so there we have them all finished up. Nothing too crazy here. Uh, and then I've added in a couple that I previously did as well. So we can kind of see a comparison. So you can see essentially from them laying down, kind of looking at the bottom, uh, we have all the kind of shade drawn towards the bottom area and then kind of brighter at the top. And just going down the line, we have the Carlboro Crimson, the red. We have the Drakenoff Nightshade, the blue. We have our Nullin Oil, and then of course we have Seraphim Sepia. So we basically have a couple different options here. Uh, the sort of like brownish orange color, um, kind of fitting in with the Octaria set. We have the Nullin Oil, more of just a traditional kind of metallic look to it. And then the Drakenoff Nightshade and Carlboro Crimson, are, you know, the red and blue to kind of correspond with like two opposing kill teams and sort of uh, emulate the look of our TTS. Uh, kind of like a look there so uh, but just a couple options pretty simple does not take a long time to do uh, the majority of the time honestly is waiting for the wash to dry uh, in between the actual dry brush very simple but adds a nice little effect to the game and then also kind of cool that you can distinguish whose are whose uh, not that it makes much difference as either player can benefit from the effects of them so just for a closer look this is our Carlboro Crimson and we can just kind of see the metallic effect and the lighter silver that we dry brushed on later, the Iron Breaker, is very subtle, uh, but just kind of gives it that extra little bit of sheen. And here we have our Drakenoff Nightshade, which is our blue. And again, we see like uh, just the edges kind of have that extra little glisten to them. And then, of course, we have the Nullin Oil. Just more of a traditional kind of metallic look. Just your like kind of black and steel thing going on here. And last but not least, we have the Seraphim Sepia. And it's uh, brown, but almost has like an orange kind of tint to it. Uh, perfect for our sort of like desert kind of uh, terrain or game board. So there we have it. That is our four different styles for the barricades. All finished up and ready to be played with. Uh, let me know if you have any particular colors or styles or anything that you are working with. Uh, if you like this technique or if you had something else in mind. Uh, just kind of keeping it relatively simple here. Uh, you could kind of go in and sort of paint the different areas like the kind of trim on it different colors or paint the whole barricade one color and then kind of pick out the rivets uh, tons and tons of options here but i think most people would rather focus on painting up like the larger pieces of terrain or their models themselves so i just wanted to make a nice and simple easy way that we can make these look cool uh, with very little effort so 
That's it for today. Warhammer Man Studios with our Kill Team Barricade painting tutorial. Uh, if you liked the video today, make sure you subscribe for Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and of course, Warcry content as well. Everything from painting tutorials like this to magnetizing, lighting, or conversion tutorials. Uh, we are a commission-based studio, so we show off our commissions as they go out the door. And then, of course, we do all kinds of reactions and reviews for upcoming previews and releases, etc. So for any kind of tabletop gaming, including any of the ones previously listed, we are your one-stop shop. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm at it here.